In this lecture, lecture four of electrical fundamentals, we will uh, study series circuit, uh, Kirchhoff's voltage law, voltage divider rule, and we will also see how uh, power is seen uh, in a series circuit. Um, the lecture may seem a bit longer than the usual, uh, and uh, the reason for that is that we will solve uh, about roughly 20 um, examples. There's 20 different uh, circuit examples in here. So if certain topics you understand, you can certainly skip it, uh, but we, you are encouraged to go through these 20 different uh, problems that we will solve. A circuit by definition will have three components. It will have a source. The source is what brings, what feeds the entire circuit. It, it is the energy source for the circuit. It has a load. Uh, so a load could be, the, for instance, the different components that you have connected, uh, or in this case, the components uh, are, are resistors. So the load is, is basically a bunch of resistors that you have. And you should also have a, a path. So the path is essentially the wire that connects the different components in order to have a closed loop uh, in order for the uh, for the electrons to flow uh, in the wire. So this is the these are the requirements for a, a circuit, really a source, a load in and a path. Now, precisely, if we look at a series circuit, um, it, it is uh, I mean, as the definition is, is written here, a series circuit is one that has only one current path. So if I look, for instance, as, as this circuit here, and, and if I look at the path for the current, the current flows, it, it leaves the source, it goes into the resistor one, it goes into resistor two, moves into resistor three, and back to the source. There is just one path for the current to flow. There's no other path for it to flow. If I look at uh, this, this other circuit, the same thing. Um, so the current, it leaves the source, it moves into resistor one, resistor two, resistor three, and back to the source. Uh, if I look at this one, it leaves the source, it goes to resistor 1, resistor 2, resistor 3, and again back to the source. Now, maybe these two, uh, they're done in such a way that it, um, it, I mean, they're done kind of deliberately to confuse uh, an observer. Uh, but at the end of the day, there's just one loop here. If you look at it, there's just one loop. It's just the way that is that is formed, um, it's a bit confusing. It might lead you to believe it's a, it's a parallel circuit um, uh, and this one too, but, but it's not. It's a series circuit, there's just one loop to it, and there's just one path uh, for the current. And, and therefore, a series circuit is really considered a basic circuit. Um, the analysis of it is really straightforward, and we'll see how th this is the case. So as we said, in a series circuit, you will only have one path for the current, which basically means that if you take your your leads uh, and you want to measure um, the 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 current in different parts in a series circuit, you're expected to find the same value everywhere. So whether you measure it here, whether you measure it on this side, you measure it here, here, it doesn't matter. You expect to see the same value. Uh, it's the same amount of um, uh, a, a, a flow or the the same amount of the of the current. So you can think of these different boxes as DMMs, um, and and you as we discussed before, and you've seen this in lab one and lab two. Um, with when you simulated using uh, multi-sim, you had to break your circuit and you had to connect um, your DMM. So in this case, this is a DMM. We break the circuit. Connected, we find two milliamps. Uh, and then if you look at this one, this one, and this one, we also expect them to be uh, two milliamps as well. Two milliamps here, two milliamps. And this is kind of one of the key um, uh, features uh, of a series circuit is that the current, no matter where you measure it, will be the same. Uh, the voltage, that's a different story. But the current will be the same within the loop, anywhere you measure it. If one has a series circuit, and in the circuit you have different uh, resistors that are connected, like this one here. So you have the source, uh, you have your, your path, these, these wires that are everywhere here, uh, and, uh, and you have a bunch of resistors, R1, R2, R3. And these, everything is connected in a series. Uh, if you look at it, there's just one loop. And we might ask, well, what is the total resistance of this circuit? So I have a circuit, what is the total resistance of a circuit? Uh, so it turns out that in a series circuit, the total resistance is simply the sum of the individual resistors. So if I give you the circuit and I say, what is the total resistance? Uh, you don't need to break your head. It's just you add this one to this one to this one, and that gives you the total resistance of the circuit. So in a series circuit, 
uh, it, it's really straightforward to find a total resistance. You simply add it. As for the current, it's going to be the same thing. You need to determine the current, and then it's going to be the same thing everywhere. So let's see how to, to add the, the resistance. Uh, by the way, I think it goes without saying, and I think we discussed it before, that when you add, uh, we, we saw this in lecture one, you need to make sure that the prefix is the same. So here, this is 2.2 kilo ohm. This is 1.5 kilo ohm, but then this is not in kilo. So uh, when you add it, you have to be careful. You can change this to kilo, and then you can do the addition. Okay, so let's do this. Uh, so the RT, or the total resistance, is equal to the first resistor, second, plus the third. Uh, and we will use the, we will make sure that all three have the same prefix. So 680 ohms is the same thing as saying 0 0.68 kilo ohm, right? Uh, this is 1.5, and then this is 2.2. Uh, Put them all together, we add, and we find that the total resistance of the circuit is 4.38 kilo ohm. And this is uh, really the uh, the answer that we're looking for. Uh, we have the prefix, we have the, the units, and we, we did use the convention of three significant digits. So this is uh, good. So in this slide, my interest is to essentially show you uh, the different parameters that one can see uh, within a series circuit. So, for instance, uh, one of the, uh, the questions that, that we could ask is, well, we have the circuit. We know that there is a current that leaves a source uh, that enters into resistor 1. Uh, the same current will also enter resistor 2, and the same current will enter resistor 3, uh, and the same current will go back to the source because it's a series circuit. Um, so if we were to annotate them, well, the, the current that goes into resistor 1, this is simply, we can refer to it as I1. Uh, the current that goes into resistor 2, we could refer to it as I2. Uh, the current that goes into resistor 3, we could refer to it as I3. And the uh, current that enters and leaves a source, we could refer to it as IT, I total. Sometimes in books, you might see this as I. Uh, S, right? S for source, so this could also be written as IS. Uh, but here, let's just use T for total, okay? And uh, if if you notice here, what is, uh, what is interesting is that in a series circuit, because you only have one loop, all of these currents, I total, I1, I2, I3, will be the same. We expect them to be the same. So in reality, we expect all of them to be the same because we only have one loop, one loop for the circuit. Right? We don't have uh, more than uh, than one loop, and and that's the reason why you know why we expect everything just one entire loop. The, why we expect all the the different currents to be the the same. The other thing that uh, that is also uh, kind of interesting to uh, to observe is is uh, and, and perhaps to to annotate and to to see where they are is the voltages, right? So we need to find the V1, V2, these voltages, V1, V2, and V3. Where do, can we see it in, in this diagram? Where can we see it in the circuit? So V1 would be the voltage that is consumed by resistor one. Uh, so because the current is flowing in this direction, the plus of the voltage will be here, the minus will be here, and the voltage across this resistor, we can refer to it as V1. Uh, because the current is flowing this way, the plus will be here, the minus will be here, and the voltage uh, across R2 will be V2. Um, the voltage across R3 in a similar fashion will be also uh, R3. We put the plus here, we put the minus here, and then that's uh, V3. Okay, and then uh, the same thing here with the source. Well, this is the source, right? So the source... Uh, because the current is flowing in that direction, the plus will be there on top, and the minus will be here. Now, the, the voltages will not be the same like we said with the currents. Because of KVL, because of KVL, Kirchhoff's voltage law, what, what KVL tells us that the voltage here of the source, voltage of the source, so this is really true KVL, Vs will essentially equal to the voltage uh, dropped by the first resistor, V1, plus the voltage dropped by the second resistor, V2, plus the voltage dropped by the third resistor, V3. And again, we get this because of KVL. Um, as for the current, well, we expect all the current, I total, to equal to I1, to equal to I2, 
and to equal to I3. This is uh, for the current. So this is what we observe for this series uh, circuit. So perhaps we could uh, go ahead and, and do the, the analysis to figure this out. So maybe when we look at our, um, uh, our, our table here, we could ask ourselves, well, what is the first thing we need to do to tackle and to try to solve this? Well, uh, the, I guess this is not a bad idea to begin with current, to figure out what is the current. Now, to, in order to figure out the current, because all the current, including the total current, is the same, what we could do is we could, in fact, find the equivalent circuit, the equivalent circuit. So, so we have this, we have this, this is, this is the main circuit that we have, right? But, uh, I mean, it's fine. There are some components to it. Uh, it's not that complicated, but nonetheless, it is also, it has some degree of complexity. So what if we make it even simpler? How can we make it simpler? We could simply basically uh, represent the same circuit by an equivalent circuit, equivalent circuit, equivalent uh, circuit. How do we find an equivalent circuit here? Well, we could simply represent this entire circuit by simply one voltage source, 12 volts, this 12 volts that we have, 12 volts. And instead of having three resistors, why don't we just represent it by one single resistor? This will make our analysis much, much easier. One simple resistor, we call it R total, total resistance, okay? And, uh, and of course we have the ground in the bottom. Don't forget the ground. And here we have our current, the current that flows in. And the current that flows uh, um, in, in this wire is really our I total, I total. So this circuit, this circuit, this circuit here is equivalent to the other circuit. However, this circuit is much, much easier to solve. This is a much, much easier circuit to solve, and, 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 and let's just do it. So do we have our total? We do. It's, it's in fact here. And then we, we, in reality, found it on the other slides, on previous slides. We already found that our total is simply the addition of the resistors. So this is 4.38 kilo ohm, kilo ohm. And um, we have the voltage. We're only missing this total uh, current. In order to find total current, we could simply use Ohm's law. So we know through Ohm's law that V is equal to Ri, or we could simply say that I is equal to the voltage, which in this case is 12, divided by resistance. Resistance is 4.38 4 kilo, right? If we take our calculator and we do uh, this, we determine that the value for uh, the total uh, current will be 2.74 milliamps. So it's really 12 divided by 4.38. There's a K in the bottom. When we divide by K, it becomes milli on top. And that's why we get 2.74 milliamps. And then we write I1, I2, I3 with the same value because we notice that they are all equal. Right? We, we just discussed this. They're all equal. And therefore, right away, automatically, we could put in the same value for the other uh, variables. Okay. Now, uh, what we uh, then need to uh, to identify is uh, is the voltages. These voltage uh, drops here. How much is how much voltage is consumed by each of the resistor? So, so this is the um, uh, the, the next thing that, that we need to, to, to do. So perhaps we could just clear some 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 of the place here, so we have some some space to work on. Um, so let's just clean it up a bit here. And we will continue. So now we are interested to find the voltages. For the voltages, um, we—I mean, one thing that is interesting to, to, to note. Sometimes I tell this to students. Uh, it, sometimes analogies help in understanding a concept. I tell them think of a source as though it's a it's a slice of it's a pizza. It's a, it's a pizza pie that you have. And let's say this pizza in it you have 12 slices. How many, and then these three resistors, you can think of them as three different individuals. How many slices will be eaten by this individual? How many slices will be eaten by this other individual? And how many slices will be eaten by this third individual, right? So it's a specific quantity, uh, and then the, this pizza, if you will, is split among them. 
Again, this is just a, um, a basic, silly uh, example, but sometimes it helps uh, for people uh, that are seeing uh, KVL for the first time. So in order to find the voltage V1, what we, would do, what we could do is we could simply apply Ohm's law. So voltage is equal to the resistance, R1, R1, times the current. What is the current that flows in here? Well, I1 or IT, it doesn't matter. They're all the same times I1, okay? And we have all these values. R1, we do have it. It's this one here, 0 0.68 kilo. I1, we have it, it is this. We simply multiply them together, and this should give us the voltage. And we do this across the board for the others, for I2, for I3, and the same thing for, for I total. And in fact, when we do the multiplication between this and this, we basically will get the, 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 the source, the value of the source, the 12 volts. So if we do this, if we do the multiplication uh, for the different values, for, so for, for V1, we multiply this one with this one together, we get 1.86 volts. We do the same thing for the other one. We multiply this one and this one together, we get 4.11 volts. And we do this uh, for the third uh, voltage, and we get this one here. And if you add these three different voltages together, you get to your uh, to your source. And that's kind of through through KVL. Okay, so now we're almost getting there with with filling in the table. The only thing that is missing now is the is the power. So how do we find the power dissipated by each component? How do we find that? Well, we could we could go back to the definition of uh, of um, uh, uh, for power. So, so essentially we go back to, uh, to Watt's law. And through Watt's law, we know that power, this is the average power, is equal to voltage times current, right? This is what we know. We also saw that power can also be represented as voltage squared divided by resistance. Uh, we also saw an, a third way of writing power the power can be determined by doing finding the current and we square that we square that times resistance so there's really three ways of finding the same thing all three you know like the saying goes tous les chemins amènent à Rome or or all roads uh, leads to Rome it's the same thing here you have three different ways and all three different ways will get you to to your power so it's, 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 the option is really left to, to the individual to pick whichever of the three options they prefer, either the first one or the second one or the third one. If you ask me personally, I would opt with this one with, by using V times I. We have all of them, by the way. We have the voltage, we have the resistance, and we have the current. So we could certainly use all three. But why do we use this one? It is, computation, it, it is computationally smarter. When you use a calculator, you will punch less buttons with a calculator. In here, you have to square, then you divide. In here, you square, then you multiply. In here, you simply multiply these values. You have your current, you have your voltage, you simply multiply them together, and that gets you your, your power. And you do this across the board for the different components in here. So if we do that, we will get for the P1, um, 5.1, or 5.10 milliwatt, for P2, 11.3 milliwatt, for P3, 16.5 milliwatt. And what is interesting for the total is you could also add the different components, the different powers to find it. Or else, if you don't wanna add it, you could simply multiply this current and this one, this will also bring you to your 32.9 milliwatts, okay? Um, by the way, also the milli, it, it is carried through because of the, uh, in, in current, we have a milli app. The, the milli here, that's why there's a milli here. It's, it's a milliwatt. Okay, so now I think I think we, we saw exactly how to build this entire table. And this essentially gives us the different values that we have in a circuit. In here, we want to show you how voltage sources can also be connected in series. So let's say you have a bunch of batteries. You can think of each of these ones as a battery. So this is a 9-volt battery. This is another 9-volt battery. This is a third 9-volt battery. If you connect them in series, you, in principle, expect to have 3 times 9, 27 volts a battery. So if you have uh, three small batteries, you put them together, you get one bigger voltage battery. Uh, and that's what you expect to get. Uh, and this, here, the same thing here. Uh, but one has to be careful in terms of polarity. 
Uh, polarity is is everything when you connect your components, uh, especially components that do have polarity. I think we talked in lecture two that resistors they don't have polarity, so that's fine. You could connect them, connect them either way; it doesn't matter. But with a source, there is a polarity, and if you connect it in the wrong way, then you would have wasted resources. Uh, you would have paid for a battery, but the battery that you uh, that you paid for will be useless. It's it's in fact not only useless, it will be harmful. So let's see the example here, and I hope that it, you'll you'll better understand what's going on. So uh, let's uh, let me let me just show you. Maybe I could put a color so we could think of this as one big battery, one big battery, one big battery. This is the plus of the battery. And this is the minus of the battery. So if we have, let's say, I don't know, uh, we have a, a DMM, a digital multimeter, uh, and we connect our DMM. So this is our DMM. And we put the DMM uh, to the voltage setting. So we're trying to measure voltage. And we have the negative uh, uh, probe here. And we have the positive probe. And the positive is connected here to the positive side. And the negative is connected to the negative side. What do you think the DMM will show? What do we expect the DMM to show? Well, we have three voltages. They're connected in series. We really expect this device to tell us that we have 27, right? 3 times 9, 27 volts. And we say that because they are connected in the correct way. There's a plus here. This is connected to the plus of the DMM. This is connected to the minus of the DMM. There's a minus here. There's a plus here. There's a minus here. There's a plus here. There's a minus here. And there's a plus here. So this, this battery, this subcomponent of the battery, contributes to plus 9 volts. This other component contributes to plus 9 volts as well. And this component also contributes to plus 9 volts. So again, because they are connected in the proper way, the polarity is consistent with the polarity of your measurement equipment, you expect to get 27 volts. And if we try it, this is exactly what we get. We get 27 volts, and this is great. So again, we took three smaller voltages, uh, voltage components. We put them together. We got a bigger uh, voltage source. And that's great. That's, that, that was our goal. Now, what if we look at this other setup? So let's say we have batteries, then we also connect them in uh, in series. We connect different batteries together in series, and we're hoping to get 27. And let's see what this one will give us. So we could, uh, like we did with the other one, we could think of this as though it is a big battery. It's a big battery here. It has a polarity on this side where this is your plus, and it has a polarity on this side where it is a minus. So we connected three smaller uh, batteries, this one, this one, and this one, and we expect to get a bigger, fatter, more powerful battery source, uh, so more voltages. And, uh, in, and so let's say we have a DMM. We'll just connect a DMM in here. Let's say we have a DMM. So we have a DMM, digital multimeter, and we put it to the voltage setting. We have our polarity on the DMM, so this is our plus. So the lead for the plus will be here, and the probe for the minus will be here. So we take it and we connect it here to the plus, and we take it and we connect it to the minus of this bigger battery. And what do we expect to see with a DMM? Uh, well, let's see the contribution of each of the components. So this subcomponent of this bigger battery has a minus here. It has a plus here. So this one will certainly contribute a, a value of plus 9 volts. This one also, it has a minus here. It has a plus here. So this one will contribute a plus 9 volts as well. And again, the, the polarity of the battery is consistent with the polarity of your measuring device. Right? That's why there's a plus here and there's a minus here, because it should be consistent. Um, 
whereas if you look at this area here, the, the highlighted area, this one here, there is a problem here. The polarity here uh, is not consistent with everything else and with your measurement equipment. It is flipped. So this highlighted area will in fact contribute as nine, minus 9 volts. Minus 9 volts. So now if we look at the the addition or the superposition of all of these three different uh, um, uh, batteries this is plus nine so we the resultant voltage will be plus nine minus nine plus nine and what this means is that the total voltage will only be nine volts so notice how uh, how this connection wasn't done smartly we paid money for this battery we paid also money for this battery, but we connected it in not a wise way. And therefore, this, with this, they cancels each other. And this entire, these two batteries are just, we wasted money for no reason. We could have just simply used one voltage, uh, one, one, one small, uh, tiny 9 volt, uh, and it would have given us the same thing. So at the end of the day, what I'm trying to, to tell you is that connecting the batteries, you need to make sure you put them in the right polarity. Otherwise, you would uh, be harming your yourself. You, you would be harming your company. You would be wasting money. And also, uh, you're wasting resources. And also, you're making a, uh, you're, you'll be taking too much space. Let's say if you're trying to design a, an, an electric vehicle, you'll be taking too much space in an electric vehicle uh, with no benefit, with absolutely no benefit. So connecting the polarity of a battery is very critical. This is this wasn't done in a smart way. So let's see the result that we get. The result, uh, it's, it's a bit kind of overshadowed by different things, but it says nine volts that we have here. So bad connectivity only got us nine volt. Good connectivity, it got us 27 volts. Although we did talk about Kirchhoff's voltage law uh, in, in earlier slides of in this lecture, but this is the most formal uh, definition that we could give you for KVL. Uh, so again, Kirchhoff's voltage law, this is how uh, the, the law is, but the shorthand notation is just KVL. So anytime you hear KVL, you should, you should basically know this. So the definition, if we read it together, KVL is the sum of all voltage drops uh, around a single closed path in a circuit is equal to the total source voltage in that closed path. So all the voltage drop, whatever elements you have, whatever components you have, let's say resistors, every resistor will consume certain voltages. If you add the voltage drops uh, uh, across uh, each of these resistors and you take all the different sources that you have in this closed path, the addition of the sources and the addition of the um, of the voltage drop across the resistor should equal to each other. Or, if you will, the, uh, the, the, the arithmetic sum will be zero. And then we'll explain to you why it is zero. This is kind of the, the notation for this. So you have a summation. You take the voltage across different components, sources in, um, in those uh, voltage drops uh, across a resistor, and everything should add up to zero. Okay, so let's maybe look at this example. Uh, so we have a source, 12 volts. We have three resistors, uh, 0.68 kilo ohm, 1.5 kilo ohm, and 2.2 kilo ohm. So we obtained this table uh, previously. We we're just kind of showing you it to you again here. And here the question is, can we see KVL uh, in this drawing? So uh, we can certainly see KVL. If, if you notice, if you notice here. The addition of the voltage, the voltage that is dropped by this resistor, how much voltage does this resistor consume? Well, it's 1.86 volts. How much voltage does R2 consume? It's 4.11 volts. How much voltage does R3 consume? It's 6.03 volts. And if you add all of them, you add these three, this voltage plus this voltage plus this voltage, these voltages will equal this, will equal the source voltage, right? And, and this is essentially how we can see KVL in this um, uh, in this table. So the sum of the resistor voltages is equal to the source voltage. Now you might say, well, how does this thing work? Like, why is there a summation that adds up to zero? Here, uh, it's not quite zero. Well, the way the the, the, the explanation is, is shown is for if we were to maybe I could kind of show it to you in this example. Uh, in order to see how this 
would work on such a circuit, notice what we do. First of all, we have a circuit. We could do the path for the current. So you have a current that leads from the source uh, that goes like this. It goes into resistor two, the current goes into resistor three, and the current goes back to the source, okay? Since the current is moving this way, this end will be plus, right? This is the plus side of your source. This is the negative side of your source. Also, this is the, um, let me change color. This is the plus side of voltage drop V1. This is the plus side of voltage drop V2 in negative. This is the plus side of voltage drop V3 in the negative. So the way we use this, um, uh, this summation here, the summation is as follows. Let's, let's maybe write it down. Since we're leaving the source, we are leaving the source, we could write it is minus Vs. We are leaving the source minus Vs. And the current is entering this thing here, is entering this resistor. It becomes plus V1, right? Uh, and is entering the plus side of R2. We could say plus V2. And it is entering the arrow, it is entering here, uh, it is entering um, the uh, voltage V3, we could say plus V3, and this should give us zero. Okay. Across the loop, if we take it and we follow this convention of plus or minus the polarities, this should add up to zero. And indeed, this is what happens, right? So uh, because of this reality, you could also kind of rearrange it and say that Vs bring Vs to the other side, is equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3. Right? The voltage drop across the first resistor, the second resistor, and the third resistor, when you add it, should add to the source. And this is exactly what happens here. We add these three, it adds up to this one here. So this is kind of an explanation where this expression comes from. What does it really mean? How do you make sense of this expression? This is what it, what it is, okay? You will see this in more advanced uh, electronics uh, courses. For now, just realize that if you have a source, uh, the drop across the different components in your in a loop is equal to the value of the source. That's it, right? So as you, as you see in this table. So this is uh, KVL. So in here, we want to explain to you a, a concept known as voltage divider rule. Um, we will basically see two of these rules that look um, more or less the same. Uh, they're not the same, but they look somewhat, they, are, they have some resemblance to each other. So voltage divider rule and current divider rule. Voltage divider rule, we will use it anytime we study a series a circuit. Current divider rule, we will study that anytime we see a parallel circuit. So we'll see that uh, next time. But for now, let's just focus on voltage divider rule. Let's read what the rule is all about. So the voltage drop across any given resistor in a series circuit is equal to the ratio of that resistor to the total resistance multiplied by the voltage source. So this is, uh, there's, uh, it's, a, it's an intricate explanation. Uh, it will make sense when you see it in an example. So let's let's say we give you this circuit here. This is a circuit that we give you. There's a source, and let's say you, you have two resistors. And the question that we ask you is, well, you have this, and we wanna know what is the voltage that is dropped across R2? So I guess what you would typically do through conventional wisdom is perhaps find the total resistance, uh, find your equivalent circuit, determine the I total, the I total for that equivalent circuit. Once you have the current, the current will be the same everywhere uh, in the circuit. So you could take that current, you multiply by I2, and then you find the voltage. However, if you use the voltage divider rule, you could right away find the voltage for R2 on the spot. You don't need to break your head. So here, assume R1 is twice the size of R2. So R1, this one here, is two times the size of R2. So R1 is equal to 2 R2. The question is, what is the voltage across R1? What is the voltage across R2? So let's do it together. Uh, again, we go through, uh, we try to read the English of the question and then move from English to some equation. 
right? So here we're saying assume R1 is twice the size of R2. So R1 is equal to 2 times R2. That's the first thing that we, we can note here. And now we could apply voltage divider rule. Voltage divider rule, in, uh, f in order to determine um, the voltage across R1, the process is very simple. We'll, we'll do this together and you'll see that it is simple. We want basically to find, maybe I could annotate this a bit again. So we have current, it's flowing like this. It's coming to this resistor, it's moving to second resistor, and it goes back all the way to the source. This, because we see the path of the current, we know there's a voltage V1 here. There's another voltage drop V2 here, okay? And we are curious to know what is this? We're curious to know what on earth is this V1? What is it? How can we find this? So the formula is very simple. In order to find this voltage V1, what you do is you take the total voltage Vs, you write it, you write it here, and you do a ratio. You do a ratio. In the top, in the numerator, you put this resistor, the resistor of the voltage that you're looking at. You're looking for V1, take R1, put it in the top, okay? And in the bottom, you put the total resistance. What is the total resistance of the circuit? Is the addition of these two, R1 plus R2. So this would be your total resistance. If you will, it is your total resistance, okay, RT. Or, or if you don't want to write RT, you could simply right away write it as, um, as R1 plus R2, okay? So now we could just plug in values, plug in values. For VS, it is 12 volts. We could put in 12. Uh, on top for R1, we enter, well, we don't have a value for R, R1. We simply know that R1 is two times R2. So we could write two times R2. That's what we write on the numerator. And in the denominator, we write R1. Again, R1 is two times R2. Two times R2 plus R2 plus R2. So in reality, in the bottom, what you will get is you will get three R2, and on top you have two R2. The R2s can be can cancel, and you'll have two divided by three. So two times uh, so twelve times two, and everything is divided by three. So twelve divided by three that's four. Two times four should be eight volts. Eight volts. Notice how easy it was to get the voltage across this with just one expression because of voltage divided rule. So we know that resistor one consumes, will, will consume eight volts. And if this consumes eight volts, how many volts do you think our V2 will be? Do I need to do any calculation? Not really, right? I don't need to do any calculation for V2. I know the total is 12. Eight of the 12 are used here. What is the remaining? The remaining is four volts. The remaining four volts will be here, four volts for V2. So, so that's why it becomes very uh, incredible. You could, we right away answered A and B uh, very quickly, right? We didn't need to do a lot of calculation, especially for V2. Since we have V1, V2 is whatever is left. We have 12 volts. This is our full pizza. This person eats eight slices of the 12 slice pizza. Well, how many slices do we have left? Four slices, right? I mean, again, we go back to this kind of silly example uh, to, to kind of make sense of this. Okay, so uh, this is the explanation. Uh, I will erase all this so so we, we will be able to, to maybe uh, see in a clear way uh, what's going on, or, or perhaps I'm going to keep it. Um, so this is uh, what we have, right? So this is, uh, we do some calculation. We figure out it is 8 volts. I think I'm going to erase it. I think it's going to be uh, much easier to see. So again, we do the, the, the calculation for V1. We take the source. We take the resistor itself. We divide by that. We use this identity in here. So this this kind of what we got. We simplify. We find that it is 8. We, we put it with three significant digits and the unit. So V1 is 8 volts. What about V2? Well, V2 is equal to Vs, the total, minus V1. That's 12 minus 8, and that's where the voltage drop across V2 is 4 volts. In question 6, we have another voltage divider rule uh, example. 
so uh, we do have a source it's 20 volts we have two resistors the first one is 15k the second one is 10k and now the question that we ask you is what is the voltage across r2 so essentially how much does this resistor consume in terms of voltages so from the 20 volts how many volts are, are here and how many volts are then here so initially we want to find this one r2 so we can certainly use the voltage divider rule uh, but before we do that uh, it's not a bad idea to annotate so we have the current that flows like this it comes to the resistor and it goes all the way back to the source uh, because the current is flowing this way plus with minus here this resistor plus minus is here for the other resistor this is your v1 this is your v2 and the question is what is this what is v2 so we do use uh, the voltage divider rule and this is what what we notice so v2 v2 this thing here that we're looking for is equal to the total voltage here and we open a parenthesis in the top we put the resistor related to this v2 so what is the resistor related to v2 it's r2 that's why we put r2 on top in the bottom we put the total resistance our total or if you will r1 plus r2 these two the addition of both in the bottom and now we simply plug in the values for vs we could simply uh you know j just basically enter the value or we could just uh, keep it like this vs uh, um so that's basically our 20 volts here and on top we put in the value for r2 which is 10 10k the k's cancel that's why i didn't write the case so k on top k in the bottom they cancel each other so i just wrote 10 on top in the bottom you have r1 which is 15 and r2 which is 10 so you have vs which is your 20 volts on top you have 10 in the bottom you have 25 or if you will you can simplify vs is 2 over 5 and now we put in the 20 20 times 2 that's 80 80 divided by 5 that's eight in fact it's eight volts right? so this is the result that we get for v2 now that we have this how many volts will we have for v1 in order to answer for b well if if overall we have 20 volts this one consumes or or uses eight of the volts we should be left with 12 volts so v1 will be 12 volts right? so we take the the total source 20 volts we subtract what we just got the 8 and that gives us 12 volts okay so as you can see the voltage divider rule is ridiculously simple you simply need to know that for any voltage that you're interested to find you use the source and then you do a ratio the resistance of uh, related to whatever you're you're measuring you're interested to measure over the total resistance and that's it and then the rest you just move through it and then you find the 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 value the, the rest is just base, basically just basic arithmetic so uh if you notice here maybe we could also do some some ratios so how much of the 20 volts is consumed by the second resistor so you could do v2 which is 8 volts divided by 20 volts times 100 so 40 percent of your voltage is consumed by this resistor and the rest 60 percent is consumed by this other resistor right so that's how uh, we could also kind of if we're interested to know what how much how much of the of the source is consumed by each of the resistors this is what you would do okay here in question seven we have another voltage divider rule uh question uh we do have a circuit and the question is what is v out so uh always good to begin by looking at the circuit and annotating so we do have a source of 15 volts dc the current will flow this way out of the source into r1 out of r1 into r2 out of r2 back to the source back to the source the uh, measures for voltages are plus here minus here that's our v1 plus here minus here this is our v2 it just happens that v2 is basically equals to our v out so anytime we're interested to find this v out so basically v out is basically v2 and we don't know what v out or v2 is this is the question what is it 
So again, we do apply voltage divider rule because it would be the smartest thing uh, to do in this situation. Uh, and we, uh, the, these are the steps that, that we get. So let's look at it slowly. V out, or if you will, V2, is equal to the main, the voltage of the source. The source is this, 50 volts. We put it in here. On top, you put the resistance related to this V out. We said V out is, is in fact V2, and it's related to R2. So on top, you put R2. In the bottom, you put the total resistance. So it's these two added together, R1 and R2. And now we simply put in some values. We put in the numbers that are related to this. So Vs is 15. We put in 15. R2 is 10. We put in 10. R1 is 20. R2 is 10. And if you notice, I didn't put the Ks because they all cancel each other. So now we have 15 over 10 divided by 30. The zeros cancels out. We have 15 divided by 3. And this is equal to 5 volts. This is what we get. 5 volts. Uh, is the result that we get for V out. So as you can see, straight to the answer because of voltage divider rule. Okay, so in here we have question number eight. Uh, we will look at how power is seen in a series circuit. So we have a circuit, uh, it's a basic circuit. We have a source, two resistors, and we're asking us to find a voltage uh, V1 here and V2. This one here, the voltage uh, uh, consumed by resistor 2. And then to find uh, uh, the power in R1, which is P1. The power in R2, which is to find P2, the second power, power here. And the total power. Total power would be the addition of these two powers. Okay? Uh, and that's it. So maybe we could annotate. It's always a good practice to do this. Current leaves the source. It enters resistor 1, goes into resistor 2 leave resistor 2 and it goes back to the source okay the current is flowing this way which means this will be plus here minus here plus here minus here this is v1 this is v2 also um this 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 resistor here with the resistance and the voltage will give us our first power this resistor will give us the second power and the total power is basically equal the addition of these two powers, right? So it's P1 uh, plus P2, right? And in fact, this total power is the power that you get from the source, the power from this source, right? This is, it's equal to it. So, so this is also uh, interesting to, to know. Now let's just go through the steps to find this. How do we find uh, V1? Well, certainly we can use um, uh, the voltage divider rule, and this is exactly what we get. Uh, by the way, I, I guess the, I noticed this is a typo. This should be V1, not V2, V1. So what, what we have is, uh, is the following. V1 is equal to Vs, the source, 20 volts. And on top, you put R1, 470 ohms. In the bottom, you put the total resistance. So this one plus this one. In here put in the plug in the values get this result 11.75 if we write it in engineering notation with three significant digits we could simply write 11.8 volts so this is how much we get for v1 if we know this one uses 11.8 volts we can certainly find how much uh, this one consumes uh, so it's just 20 minus this and this tells us how much this one uses of voltages so the v2 uses 8.25 volts and if you add both of them, you should basically get 20. Now here you might not get the perfect 20 because of rounding errors. We rounded 11.75 to 11.8, but uh, it's more or less like a 20 volts when you add these two together. Okay, so this basically covers A. We answer this, we answer this, and this is uh, all done. The next question, uh, B, find the power of R1. The power of R1 uh, is, let's just refer to it, let's call it P1. And the power of R2, let's also call it something, and it's referred to as P2. Uh, and then we also need to find the total power, which is the addition of these powers. Now, for power, you could simply use Watt's law. Watt's law tells us that power is equal to current times voltage, or you could use voltage square divided by resistance, or you could use current uh, square times resistance. 
So there's three different ways of uh, finding power. Choose whichever uh, is best or whichever values you have. So in this case, we have the resistance. We certainly have resistance. It's here. It's here. So anything with a resistance will be will be will be good to 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 reflect on. So these two are good options. We don't have current, so we can certainly find it. But uh, why work too hard? Let's work smart. So forget about this one. So we have the the uh, the resistance. Do we have the voltages? We have the voltages consumed by the resistors. We have the uh, the first one. We have the second one. Right? We have it here. We have it here. So that we don't have the current. So this is also not a good option. This would be the best option to use from uh, from uh, from Watt's law. So let's just use this to find P1 and P2. The power dissipated by the first resistor, power dissipated by the second resistor. So if we use this, V squared divided by R for the first resistor, we get uh, 293.75 milliwatt. Um, and for the second resistor, we do the same thing. We enter the voltage for the second one and we enter the resistance. We get this right in an engineering notation. Then we could uh, we could also show it with three significant digits. So we do some rounding and we get basically the power for the dissipated in the first resistor to be 294 milliwatt, the power dissipated by the second resistor to be 206 milliwatts. And now if you want to find the total power, like we said here, you basically just add these two together. You add them together, you get 500 milliwatts. So you could basically leave it like this. Or if you want, uh, you could also write it as 0.5 watt, uh, but this is not engineering notation. So the better option of writing it would be this. PT equals to 500 uh, milliwatt. Okay. This part of the lecture, I wanted to discuss with you the convention that is used uh, when we uh, talk of voltages, um, certainly when we do a circuit analysis. What are these different conventional notations uh, that we have? So this is uh, a, 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 an important uh, thing that you should know when you analyze circuits is that sometimes you will find a, a shorthand expression like this. So you'll see a V, uh, which is voltage AB. Uh, essentially what this means, if you were to take it apart and then see inside and understand what VA beam stands for, it really means that you take the voltage at A minus the voltage at B. So uh, maybe we could read it. So voltage is, the, is relative and is measured with respect to another point in the circuit. So maybe I could draw you a, uh, an example here. So let's say we have some circuit. We have a source, VS. We have um, a resistor here, R1. We have another resistor, R2. And we go back uh, and we close the this, this source. And this is our ground here. So this is our R1. And this is our R2. So if I, let's say, put a node here, I put a node and I annotate the node, I, get, I, I call it something. So I call it node A. Right. So now we know node A, it really means this one here. And node B, it really means, we could change color, node B is this node here. Node A is this one here. Um, so if I, if I ask you, for, in, for instance, this voltage here, VAB, VAB, VAB is essentially the voltage that you take A, this point here, the plus, this will be plus, this will be negative because the current is flowing this way, right? So this will be at a higher value. So you do V at node A in here, minus V at node B in here. So anytime you see such a thing, it really means uh, it's a relative voltage, right? So you're comparing it between two points, okay? With respect to two points. If for instance, you only see, uh, maybe we'll just see it uh, in here. If you see, for instance, only one of them, let's say you only see such a thing, VA or VB or VC, whatever the case might be. Well, in this case, it means that you are doing it with respect to ground. So you are all you, voltage is always a, a comparison of two volt uh, of two, the voltages at two areas, right? You could always think about it from a measurement point of view. The same thing uh, whether you're in the lab or with multi-sim live, 
you always, when you build a circuit and you want to measure the voltage, you need to put the red positive wire on one end and the negative, uh, 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 the other wire, the common wire, uh, sometimes we use the, the black wire on the other side. And that allows you to then measure voltage. And the same thing with notation. So when you have your notation, voltage is always between two points. But sometimes you might only see one letter. This doesn't mean that you are, this doesn't mean that you only put uh, a measurement at A. What this means is that uh, you are taking it with respect to ground. So maybe I could redraw the circuit. I could redraw the circuit in this example. Let's, let's redo the circuit. So you, hopefully this will help you understand uh, what's going on. So uh, we have some resistor, we have another resistor, and let's say we have a ground. This is Vs, this is R1, this is R2. Let's show you the, the path for the current. So the current flows like this into the first resistor, into the second resistor, and back to the source, okay? Because the current flows this way, we know the plus will be here, the minus will be here, the plus will be here, the minus will be here. This is V1, this is V2, okay? Now let's let's also use uh, the different nodes. So let's consider a node here, a node here, and let's call this VA. So if in this case, we only ask you VA, what is VA? It doesn't mean that in the, if you were in the lab, you only put uh, the leads uh, uh, for the positive here and nothing else anywhere else, right? I mean, it doesn't work this way. You always have to use both ends, right? So if you have a DMM, if you have a DMM, maybe I can show you with a DMM, and we ask you to find uh, a VA, what this means is that you put uh, one end of the DMM, the positive, this is the negative, uh, maybe we could take uh, so this one the positive you go from the positive you bring it to a and the negative you put it to ground so when you don't see any other uh, um, letter or any other uh, node it always means that the other one that is not shown the not shown one here is always ground so you're always doing it with respect to ground and this is what we tell you here voltages that are given with respect to ground are shown with a single subscript single subscript Okay, so if you see any time VA, it just means that you're doing it with respect to ground. So in here, this is what VA is. Uh, is V, uh, this point here, and the ground. Okay, so you are in fact, what you're in fact doing, in this case, you're finding the voltage of V1, and you're finding the voltage of V2, and you're adding them together. And this will give you VA. In this particular example that we give you here, this, this example that I just kind of cooked on the fly here, VA is equal to the voltage V1 and the voltage V2, okay? So this is just some not notational conventions, and, and, and you, should, you should know this because this will show up in, uh, in circuit analysis. We'll, we'll show you a few examples uh, on, on the next uh, slide. Okay, so in here, uh, let's look at uh, question number nine. We ask you, uh, what are the following voltages, VA, so this is the voltage with respect to node A. Uh, there's no other letter, so we really understand that it's also with respect to the ground. So you put the plus here, you put the negative, uh, the black wire to the ground here. We look at the other one, we also want you to find VB. So you put the positive at node B here, and the negative, the common, at the ground, which is here. And we also ask us, what is VC? So VC, this is interesting because you put both of them, the plus and the negative, both of the ground. So this is interesting and it should be very easy to, to find. And we also ask you, what is VAB? So you put the plus at A and you put the negative at uh, B and you wanna find this voltage for the circuit shown. So again, maybe we could recap very quickly. If I have for the first one, for the first one, um, maybe, let's let's pick this color for vab for va it means that if you have a dmm if you have a dmm um i'm gonna just i, I i'm just gonna show it f here so you can see what's going on so you have a dmm you have your plus and you have your minus the plus 
will be connected at A, at node A, here. The minus will then be connected at the ground. This will give you your VA. So now you, you will be reading VA. Okay. Um, what if we are interested to uh, read um, uh, VB? If we're interested to read VB, then you have a DMM. The DMM. DMM. You have your uh, plus and you have your minus. The plus will be connected at B. And the minus will then be connected to ground. Okay. Uh, what if you want to find VC? If you want to find VC, in that case, what you do is this one here. Well, again, you can think about it from a DMM point of view. Of a DMM, you have a plus. Oops, a plus. You have a minus. The plus will be connected to node C, and the minus. Well. What is interesting is that it is also connected to node C. They're both connected to node C. So for, for VC. Okay. It's because node C is really the ground. Um, so this is the third one. And if you have uh, the uh, VAB, VAB, well, in this case, you have a DMM. You have a DMM. You have a plus. You have a minus. The plus is connected to node A. And the minus is connected uh, to node uh, B. Okay, that's kind of, uh, yeah, there's, there's some, it, it crosses over, but, but I hope you understand what's going on. It, the, the minus is at node B and the plus is at node A. Okay. And in reality, what this means is that if you do this, you are basically finding the voltage uh, here, the voltage of R1, the voltage of R1, which we could call it V1. So VAB is in fact really v, V1. Okay, so maybe we could uh, we could try that. Um, uh, so I, I'm going to show the, the, the actual typed uh, result that, that I have. So for VA, what we do, as we discussed, we it means that the plus will be at node A here. And the the other one, the negative wire or the, uh, the black wire will be connected to the ground here. And what this means is that you want to find the voltage between A and C. Right, the voltage between A and C. And if you look, what is the voltage between A and C? It's the entire voltage. It's basically the voltage of the source. This is node, node A here or node A here is the same thing. All this wire will be node A. Right? Uh, all this wire is node C. So it really means that you are getting the voltage of the source. So it's really 12 volts. Okay, This is the answer, 12 volts. That's your VA. For the other one, for VB, for VB, uh, don't mind the, the, the steps here. Let's first understand what VB is. VB means that you put the positive at B and you put your negative at the ground. You put your negative at the ground. And you want to find the voltage here, the voltage uh, across R2, right? You want to find the voltage across R2. This is what you're interested by, right? So maybe we could show you the, the path. The path of your current is like this. It's like this, it goes here, and then it goes back to the circuit, back to the circuit, okay? This is your first voltage, V1. This is your other voltage, V2. And if you uh, only wanna find VB, well, in that case, you are basically putting the plus here at this node, and you're putting the other node here. And what this means is that VB will in fact only be the voltage that is consumed by this resistor. It's really V2. It's really finding V2. And how do you find V2? Well, this, you have a circuit and you can certainly use uh, uh, the voltage divider rule. You put the source, you put the value of the resistor that you want because you're interested in V2. You find that VB is equal to V2. Put the uh, R2 here. You put the total resistance, which is R1 plus R2 in the bottom enter the numbers uh, and move uh, through the different steps and now you find that your VB is 8 volts. So this is really straightforward. Okay, so at this point we solve this, we solve this, we're left with VC. VC, what is interesting is that you, you put both the plus and the negative at node C and node C is the ground, which means it's already at zero. So this is zero uh, volts, okay? Uh, and now what we have left is VAB. VAB 
VAB is uh, the difference between uh, a node A and node B, which basically means you want to know how much voltage is consumed by resistor 1. So VAB is really equal to V1. It's really equal to V1. And if you know that this one, V2, consumes 8 volts and your source is 12, well, it's like a pizza. You have a pizza with 12 slices. This guy eats 8 slices. You're left with 4 slices. And that's where you get your 4 volts for, for VAB. Okay? Um, you could, if, if I went a bit too fast, you could pause it and you could reflect on it. Uh, and it, hopefully this will make sense. We'll see another example on the next slide. Uh, this is another question. Uh, so question 10, what are VA, VB, VC, and VAB for the circuit shown? It's another circuit, not like uh, a circuit shown in for question 9. Notice that the ground is in here, not in the bottom. And it's really to see if you're able to, to maneuver these different uh, measurements when the ground is, is in a, some odd place that is placed here. So let's see how to do it. We're interested for the first one, VA, which means that if we have a DMM, uh, very quickly, if we have a DMM, we have plus, we have minus, this is a box, the plus will be connected at A, node A, the minus will be connected at node B, okay? Which basically means we find the voltage that is consumed by this resistor. And the voltage consumed by this, res this resistor is essentially simply uh, V1, right? This, this voltage, uh, V1. Okay, so let's try it. This is what we get. So VA is equal to uh, node A minus the ground, which essentially is simply finding V1. And if you want to find V1, uh, what you could do is you could, uh, uh, of course, use the voltage divider rule. This is 12 volts, and um, you, you put it in here. The resistance here is R1. The total resistance is R1 plus R2. Plug in the value, so 12 5k on top, 5k plus 10k in the bottom. Uh, you do the ratio, so you have 12, 5, and 15. You move around, you do the, the mathematical maneuvering, and you determine that VA is equal to 4 volts. So this thing here consumes 4 volts. So now we answered uh, this. This is answered. Good. The next one that we have is, um, is this one, VB. How do we find uh, VB? Maybe I could erase to make it a bit uh, clear. How do we find VB? So if we have uh, a DMM and we want to find VB, we put the plus at B and we put the negative also at B. So both of them are the ground. So basically the ground is zero volts. So we expect VB to simply be zero volts. So this is a, a pretty straightforward, easy one uh, to get. So we got this one as well. So that's good. Uh, let's move to the next one. Let's move to the next one. So the next one is VC. VC means that you put the plus at node C in here. You put the negative at the ground. The ground happens to be in here. And this is what you, get, you need to find. So with this here, let's just be a bit careful. You want to find this voltage. So here, this would be your plus. This would be your negative, right? According to the way that you want to measure it with the DMM. But according to the circuit, is this the same polarity? Is negative here and positive here? Well, let's just check. A good way to check is to see the flow of the um, uh, of the current. So the the current leaves the source, leaves the source. It goes like this. It goes like this. Enters the first resistor. Goes through the first resistor. It then enters the second resistor. It goes uh, here comes here, and it goes back again to the source, okay? Because the current is flowing this way, the plus will be here, the negative will be here, so that's fine. And because the current is flowing this way, the plus will be here, the negative will be here. And this is the value for V2. However, in here, for VC, the value is flipped. We put the negative here, and the positive here so so in in other words what this means is that vc vc is essentially equal to minus v2 so if you could find your v2 vc will simply have a negative uh, v2 you could find right, right away right you don't need to think about it too much you know that v1 consumes uh, four volts 
So this eats up four volts. And how many volts do you have left? Well, you have left um, uh, eight volts, right? Because you have a, a pizza pie with 12 slices. This one, this guy eats four slices. How many do you have left? Well, you have eight uh, slices left for, for, for V2. So this is uh, eight. Therefore, VC will be minus eight. And this is what we expect to see. So let's see if this is what we get. This is exactly what we get here. And we get minus eight volts. Okay. So that, that answers VC as well. So now this is gone as well. Now what is left is we need to find VAB. I'm going to just erase the uh, this a bit just to make it a bit clear with what's going on. I hope this one here will, made sense uh, how we got it. Um, and now let's just continue. So let's just erase this one. Okay. Okay, so we need to find VAB. For VAB, essentially what, what this means is that you put the plus, you put the plus at A in here, and you put the negative at B, which essentially means that you basically find your 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 V1. V1 we already found, so the, the answer should be basically this again, 4 volts again. So let's see if this is true. It's 4 volts again, we already found this. Okay. So I hope uh, uh, this is uh, another example that kind of helps you uh, understand how these terminologies works uh, with respect to a circuit. Uh, if, if there's any problem, maybe this one will be a problem to see why is it negative? Well, why is it negative? Again, because it's not flowing in the way that we expected it with the flow of the current. Flow of the current expects this to be plus, this node here, and this node to be negative. But then the way we're measuring it is the other way around. We expect this to be negative and this to be plus, therefore the result will be negative. Okay, let's do another uh, uh, another question related to this, another example, and then um, this should be it. Okay, so now we have uh, question 11. This is the, um, the uh, another question related to voltage measurement. So we have a circuit, we have two resistors, we have a source, the ground is placed here, uh, not in the bottom, really placed here in, at node B. And we have a bunch of statements so to find VA, VB, VC, and VAB. So let's do it. But now you have to be a bit careful. Here we tell us that if R2 is open, find these measurements. So what, what this means is that R2 is open. It's as though you have nothing here. You remove the this resistor. It's open. Uh, sometimes we might say if R2 is short circuit. So if, you, if it was short circuit, you just put a wire. You replace this resistor by a plain wire but you still have a connectivity but in here we tell you it's open so it's you remove it and you just create an opening right so maybe we could redraw the circuit and that will help us uh, perhaps understand a bit better what's going on so we have a source we have a source like this okay so this is 12 volts and we have a resistor it comes in like this this is our r1 from here, it goes to the ground. It goes to the ground from R1. From the other side, it's, it's, it comes in. It goes to node C. But then there is no R2. Right? We tell you R2 is open. So you could think of it in here, like this. Right? this. This is where R2 would sit. And then this end would also connect to the ground. Okay, so I hope I hope you're you can move from this circuit to here, right? This is only because we are told that R2 is open. So uh, I hope this makes sense. So we have a source, 12 volts. We move like this. We have a resistor R1. This is 5k, 5k. From here we go to the ground. This is the ground, and then on this side we move like this, in here. But then this, this is where we replace it, right? We open this, open, open. We make our, our two open. So if we make it open, this is how it would look like. Okay, uh, maybe we could put in the nodes. Node A should be here. So this, maybe I could use a different color. This is node A. A is here. Node B is the ground. This is B. Node C is uh it is basically the the side that is connected to the source so this here will be node c okay this is node b 
in this long day. Okay, so this is really what it means. We really have to look at this circuit, not the other one. To I think it will be better. We will understand better when we say resistor two is open. So let's see what what we want to find. We want to find VA. So if you have a DMM, you would put your uh, plus here at A, and you would put the negative, the common, the black wire at the ground. You will put it here. But if you notice, what do you expect here? Do we expect any voltage drop across R1? Uh, in reality, you won't expect a voltage drop. And the reason for that is because there is no current flowing in this circuit. If you look at this, you have a battery. That's fine. You have an actual battery. Current will come out of the battery. It will come like this. It will move along. It will come. It will enter R1. Okay. But then uh, part of it, it will go to the ground. It will continue like this. And then there's air. There's nothing here. There is nothing here. This is empty. This is empty. This is air. So your the the electrons will go in the air. It's not going to go uh, to the wire. So this is not a closed loop. So there is no current. Your current is equal to zero. Current in this scenario is equal to zero. If the current is zero through Ohm's law, V is equal to R i. V is equal to R i. Right? You have 5k. You multiply it by zero. The voltage here across R1 will be zero. So if, if this voltage is zero and you want to find VAB or VA, uh, it's going to be zero. There's nothing that you will have. So this should be zero volts. VA will be zero volts. So let's just check. So this is exactly what we got. We got zero volts. Okay, so now uh, the next one, we need to find VB. VB is already at the ground. So you do just VB minus VB, which is zero minus zero, which is basically just zero. So here, there's nothing that you expect to get. You will get zero for VB as well. So this is a uh, done deal as well. We got zero here as well. So this is done. This is done. What do we have left? We have to, we need to find VC. Well, VC, uh, this is what you need to do for VC. For VC, I'm going to perhaps change color. For VC, you put your plus here and you put your minus here right at the ground right this is vc you put your plus here you put your minus here at the ground so if if you do that what you expect to get is uh, is the source so if you put your dmm put the negative here with the on the dmm you put a plus here on the dmm you expect to see minus 12 volts why is it minus 12 volts because we ex according to this battery or to this uh, dc source plus is here and negative here so this is flipped. The polarity is flip, flipped. So we expect to see minus 12 volts. This is exactly what we get. Okay, so this is done. Now what we have left is VAB. VAB, the voltage between node A and node B. So VAB, we found earlier, it's basically just the voltage uh, V1. And the voltage V1 will be zero because there's no current. This is exactly as VA, VA this one here. So we expect a zero as well. Okay. So I think what was important here is really to read the, the question. If we tell you R2 is open, redraw the circuit, make sure it's open, and then notice, is there a current? Is there, what's going on here, right? I mean, when you redraw, you remove it, you make it just empty because it's open, then I think it will make uh, certainly more sense. And here we give you some notations and some uh, definitions. If you're interested, you can pause and, and read them. And it is continued uh, on the slide as well. The following are, are extra problems that we could also do in addition to what we covered throughout the lecture. So maybe we could uh, read it together. In question one, in a series circuit with more than one resistor, the current is what? So we, we basically have to say which statement is correct. So perhaps to, to figure out what, um, what's going on, we could, uh, we could uh, very quickly draw a, a circuit to, to help us understand uh, the question. So we have a source, and we have uh, in this um, in this uh, circuit um, uh, uh, more than one resistor. Let's so let's let's just assume for the case of of the argument that we have three resistors. Uh, as long as it is one more than one resistor, we should be fine. So this is the ground. Uh, this is R one. This is R two. And this is R three. 
uh, and we're telling uh, uh, we're telling us that the current so we're really studying the current and we know in a series circuit the current that will come out of the source this current will in fact be the same for this uh, 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 through the first resistor it will be the same through the second resistor and through the third resistor so here we're telling us that the current is larger in larger resistors no this is not true in a series circuit so again be careful with the wording in a series circuit this is not true is it smaller in larger resistors this is also not true uh, it is always the same in all resistors yes in a series circuit the current will be the same in all circuit in all the uh, the resistors so c should be correct uh, there is not enough information that's also not true so we expect the answer to be c Okay, next question. Question two, in a series circuit, so this is the, the key thing to, to highlight, with more than one resistor. So let's assume we have, I don't know, three resistors like we saw earlier. What can we say about the voltage? So now we're looking at the voltage. So the question is really similar to question one, except now we are really precisely uh, looking at voltage, not, <clears throat> sorry, not current. So let's let's maybe uh, again uh, uh, sketch the the circuit again. So let's say we have a resistor R1, another resistor R2, a third resistor R3, and we close the circuit. We also have ground or reference, and let's annotate uh, the circuit R1, R2, and R3. We know, uh, 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 and let's let's just put in a source, yes, and we know certainly that the current will be the same. Current will be fixed, it, it won't change. It is uh, uniform, it is the same value uh, through all the resistors. We just saw this in question one. So now the question is, in this setting, what can we say about the voltage? So the voltage uh, of the first resistor will be V1, the voltage uh, across the second resistor will be V2, and the voltage across the third resistor uh, will be V3. Okay, so uh, we say we see the following: the um, the voltage is larger across large resistors. So maybe we could see Ohm's law. Ohm's law tells us that V is equal to R times i and we know in a series circuit the current is fixed this will not change so we could just put a knot to it it's not going to change so if this doesn't change this is fixed oops this is fixed right this is fixed then in this case what can we say about v1 maybe i could change color v2 and v3 and the current is fixed um certainly if you notice voltage and resistance they are proportional right so voltage and resistance they are proportional if you increase the resistance you certainly will increase the voltage if you decrease the resistance you will decrease the voltage so in a series circuit with more than one resistor the voltage is larger across larger resistors this seems correct because we see it from this relationship here, right? The, between the relationship between voltage and resistance. You increase the resistor for a fixed current, the voltage will also increase. So A is correct based on a first impression. But for just to make sure, let's just check the others. B, uh, the voltage is smaller ac uh, across larger resistors. Uh, no, that doesn't make sense. It just doesn't makes sense when we talk about the relationship between voltage and resistance if, if for some reason in some alternate world uh the relationship between voltage and resistance was uh, was uh, reversed then perhaps this could be true but in here uh this is not true so b is wrong c is always the same across all resistors well certainly this is not true we saw uh different and uh, different places in the in the in this lecture that the voltage will not be the same uh, it's uh, you could think of uh, the main source as a pizza and this as different people and every person will eat a certain amount of pizza depending on on on, on their size right so 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 certainly c is also wrong 
Um, D, there is not enough information to say this is also not true. So the answer is really uh, A. Next question. Question number three. If three equal resistors are in series, the total resistance is what? So again, um, if you want, you could always sketch the circuit very quickly. So you have three resistors, R1, R2, R3, in here. And let's assume we have the ground here. This is not the best drawing, but, but you get the idea, I hope. Uh, we have our source, we have our R1, we have our R2, and we have our R3. And we're saying, we're telling you that the three uh, resistors are equal. So let's just call them R0, R0, and R0. So if you look at this, and then we, well, we could certainly find the total resistance. In series, resistance is simply added. So R total, R total, which is what this blue box is, is, is simply equals to three R naught. Right, so this is what it is. Total resistance of uh, this. So in th if three uh, equal resistors are in series, the total resistance is what? Is one third uh, the value of one resistor? Not true. The same as one resistor? Not true. Uh, three times the value of one resistor? Yes, this is true. So this is uh, literally what we found, three times the value, because you add them. There's not enough information. So the answer is really uh, C. Next question. Okay, question number four. A series circuit cannot, so be careful here, cannot have which one? So, I mean, just to recap, a series circuit is just very quickly something like this, right? Like this, a resistor, another resistor, and then you close it. So this is your R1, this is your R2, uh, and then this is your source. I keep drawing because I know uh, for me it helps to understand what's going on and I hope uh, it also a, a way of showing people how, um, uh, showing the students how uh, you could see the, the problem solving approach. Okay, so a series circuit cannot have more than two resistors. So of course you can. You can have two, you can have three, you can have four, you can have as many as you want. So this is not, uh, this is a ridiculous statement, not true. Uh, a series circuit cannot have more than one voltage source. This is also not true. We saw uh, in a in few examples, let's say if you want uh, to have a certain voltage, but you only have small batteries, you could put them in series and then the value could increase. So this is not true. You could put multiple uh, uh, um, voltage sources or batteries together, and then that increases the value of it. So B is also wrong. Uh, a series circuit cannot have more than one path. This is correct, right? So this is correct. Uh, in a series circuit, you only have one path. The path is this. You know, so you essentially have only one loop. You only have one loop. And then the current leaves like this. Maybe we could change color. It leaves like this. It goes this way, it goes like this, it enters the resistor, it moves here, enters the other resistor, it moves back, and then all the way back uh, to the source. So there is only one path for the current to flow. There's no other path, there's just one loop. That's what it means. So the answer is really C. Uh, but uh, let's just check uh, D, what D says. All the above, uh, that's not true. C is, uh, it, it, so a series circuit cannot have more than one path. It always have one path. It cannot have more than one. It cannot have two paths or three paths. In a series circuit, you only have one path. So the answer is C. Next question. Okay, question number five. In a closed loop, and this is important to, to highlight, in a closed loop, the algebraic sum of all voltages from sources and from drops well, sources are basically your battery, and drops is basically the the voltage that is um, that is dropped uh, uh, across uh, each resistor, right? What is the algebraic sum? So this is really, uh, I mean, if we're looking in a series uh, circuit, this is really by definition the what what explains what KVL is all about, right? So you have a source, you have some source, and let's say we have a resistor another resistor, 
and we close the loop. Okay, so this is our R1, this is our R2, and this is the source that we have. So we're saying in a closed loop, the algebraic sum of all the voltages. In here, the current will flow in this direction. This is the plus, this is the minus, this is the plus, this is the minus. The voltage that is dropped across resistor 1 is V1. The voltage that is dropped across V2, uh, R2 is V2. And let's not for also forget the ground. And we have the source. So if you look at it from an algebraic sum point of view, we said that the sum of voltages, right, the sum of voltages should equal to zero. And this is really the definition of KVL. Kirchhoff's voltage law, right? So let's see how this applies in this example. So let's say, I don't know, some value. I mean, let's, let's assume this is, I don't know, more, let's say three volts. So if you were to write it in an algebraic way uh, around the loop, this is a source, this one here, and the, the others are drops, We you would write minus three volts because current is leaving the source. So you would write minus three volts plus v1 plus v2 equals zero equals zero so this is what you get at the end of the day when you add all the voltages around the loop it should add up to zero this is uh this is the main uh, uh voltage that you have and then this voltage is split among the others so for, if you look at it algebraically, it would be a negative voltage, and then the others will be positive voltage. And if you add these two together, this should add up to your three volts, let's say, or if you want, to your Vs, right? So uh, so the answer, if just by looking at it, and just through KVL, through KVL, the answer should really be A. The sum should be zero. But let's read the others. Is equal to the smallest voltage in the loop? Uh, no, that's not that's not true. Is equal to the largest voltage in the loop? This is also not true. Depends on the source voltage. Uh, this is also not true. So the answer should be A. Let's check. It is A. Okay, next question. Question number six. Uh, we are told the current in the 10 kilo ohm resistor is which one? What is the current in the 10 kilo ohm resistor? So the, we, this is what we're uh, wondering here. So in other words, we have our source. This is a source. We do have a current that flows out of the source. It comes in here. Oops, uh, sorry about that. It comes uh, in here. Maybe I could correct this. It goes into resistor one, moves into resistor two, and it goes all the way back to the source. So this is what, what we have. This is the current that, that we get. We could maybe call it IS, which is the source current, and IS will be the same across the loop. There's just one loop, uh, and this is what it is. So we're wondering what is the current um, at, through the uh, this resistor, through the, this resistor. So we want to know what this is, what this is. But in reality, if you find the re the current through this resistor, or if you will, the current. Uh, so the current through this resistor or the current through this resistor or the current out of the source it's all the same so just find the current period it doesn't make a difference uh, whether we tell you uh, across which of the resistors so we can certainly uh, do that the way to do this would be for instance to find the total resistance our total total resistance and the total resistance would be uh, to add this resistance and this resistance so we would add r1 plus r2 and this is what 10k plus 2k this is 12 kilo ohm 12 kilo ohm we could now build an equivalent circuit an equivalent circuit 24 volts 12k And we need to find the current IS. 
And let's say we also have our gravity. So uh, through Ohm's law, we know that the current, so again, V is equal to our I, or I is equal to the voltage, 24, divided by the resistance, which is 12K. 24 divided by 12, this should be 2. There's a K in the bottom, L on top becomes a milliamp. If you want to stick to three significant digits, you could do dot zero zero. So this is what we expect to get, a current of two milliamps. So this is not true, this is not true, this is not true. The answer should be B. Let's check. Okay, next question. So question seven, the output voltage from the voltage divider is which one? So now we're, we're, we, we have the circuit and we are only interested by the voltage here, this voltage here, or if you will, this V out, V out. Or another way of saying V out is basically the voltage drop uh, across uh, resistor two. So how much does resistor two consumes? That's what we're interested in. So we could certainly use, uh, again, f to find this, there's different ways that you could do this. Uh, you could simply use Ohm's law. You could basically find the total resistance from the total resistance, build your equivalent circuit from the equivalent circuit, determine the, uh, the total current. The total current will be uh, true everywhere. Uh, once you have the current, then you could simply multiply that total current to this resistor, and that gives you the voltage drop across R2, or if you will, V out. So that's one approach. You could do it, but it's a bit long, and it takes longer time to do, but you could certainly survive that way. Uh, and some students will do that in an exam. In here, we showed you voltage divider rule. Voltage divider rule is very, very powerful. Uh, it's a shortcut to getting to the answer quickly without needing to, to use the basics of Ohm's law. As soon as you have a circuit that is connected in series and you are interested to find the voltage uh, across a specific resistor, what you do is the following. So you find, let's say you have some circuit and you are interested to find the voltage across resistor, I don't know, I, let's go, uh, or resistor um, K. Let's call, let's say we have K resistors. You're interested to find it uh, across resistor K, um, some resistor that, that you have here. What it is, is you simply take the source, the voltage of the source, this one here. You do a ratio, you do a ratio of a small value over a large value. So a small value, small over a large value large value. This will become more clear, the small large value, uh, when we reach the uh, uh, the current divider rule. Uh, but for now, just, just bear with me when we get there. Uh, it will make more sense with the small versus large. Um, but basically what it is, is basically you look at the resistance of where you want to find your voltage. So let's say if we're interested to find the kth voltage, we will look at the kth resistance over the total resistance total resistance. And this is really the formula. This is the, the, the powerful formula that you will need to know um, when we talk about um, when we talk about voltage divider rule. So let's apply voltage divider rule here. Uh, let's, let's just do it. So maybe I could change it to, to this color. Voltage here. By the way, uh, let's, let's just annotate uh, the, the, this, this circuit. We have the current here. Let's call it um, IS. We have the voltage here. This is voltage V1, and this is voltage V2. So if you will, V out is really equal to V2. This is what it is, right? So the voltage uh, uh, that is consumed by this resistor, by resistor two, it's really your V out. So how do we find V2? V2, by definition from voltage divider rule, is equal to VS, total voltage Vs over the this resistor R2 over the total resistance. Total resistance of this circuit would be based on R1 plus R2. R1 plus R2. That gives us the total resistance of this circuit. So let's plug in some values. Vs is 24. 24. R2 is uh, 2K, 
2 kilo ohm, 2K. R1 is 10K, 10K. Uh, R2 is uh, 2K, 2K. Okay, let's close the bracket. Maybe I could clean it up a bit, so it's 24. So we have two on top, and in the bottom we have 10 plus two, so that's 12. And so we have 24 times two divided by 12. So 24 divided by 12, this is two, two times two, this should give us a value of four volts, four volts. So from the 24 volts that we have, um, so from the 24 volts that we have, two of the four volts will be here and then the rest 20 volts will be here okay so we expect the answer to be four volts the voltage v out this v2 or v out will be four volts let's uh let's let's then uh maybe um cross those that don't make sense so two doesn't make sense 12 doesn't make sense 20 doesn't make sense the answer should be b let's check good next question question number eight the total power dissipated in a series circuit is equal to which one? So the, again, just to recap, um, this might be a bit, getting a bit too much with the drawing of the circuit, but let's just do it nonetheless. Um, it helps us to capture our imagination and to see what's going on. So again, let's build a circuit with, let's say, two resistors, R1, R2, and we have a current here that flows and the current is fixed some i naught across all the resistors we also have the ground here and um we also know the voltage the voltage here is maybe I could change color v1 the voltage across the other uh, resistor is v2 so now if i want to determine the power we know through watts law there are three ways to write power so power is equal to voltage times current or power is equal to the current uh, squared times resistance or power is equal to the voltage squared divided by resistance right? three ways to do to write power through watts law um, we, I mean, we know that the, the current is fixed, um, and, and so in all of them, we could just do that. And then we could just, uh, figure out the power. So the total power, we're telling you the total power, the total power dissipated in a series circuit is equal to which one? So the total power would be, um, the, the power that is dissipated in each resistor. So if you find the power dissipated by this resistor let's call it p1 and the power dissipated by this resistor let's call it p2 and let's say you determine the power of the source pt you expect to see that pt total power or if you will power of the source is equal to the power of the source and it is also equal to the power the addition of the powers uh, the power dissipated by the first resistor and the power dissipated by the second resistor so this is what you expect no question about it this is what you expect okay so this is very important uh to 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 co comprehend so the total power dissipated in a series circuit is equal to which one the power in the larger resistor that's not true you need both of them we don't care if it's larger or smaller uh, it will impact the value but at the end of the day you want not just this you want the total power so everything counts so this is not true it cannot be true power in the smallest resistor this is also not true we look at all the resistors not smallest not largest so b is also wrong the average of the power in all uh, the average of the power in all resistors the average of the power in all resistors, uh, not quite. The sum 
of the power in all resistors. The sum of the power in all resistors. This is correct. This is what this really tells us. It tells us that you add the value of each. So if you have three resistors, you add P1 plus P2. If you have uh, two resistors, you add P1 plus P2 to find your total. If you have three resistors, you add P1 plus P2 plus P3 to find the total. Whatever resistors you have, you simply add their power, and that gives us the total. So it's really the sum of the power in all resistors. This is the correct answer. It's really D. Okay, next question. Finally, we're at question nine. Let's go uh, through it together. Uh, the meaning of the voltage VAB is the voltage that explains which of the following four, right? VAB, if you see such a thing. So this is really a convention in electrical engineering. So let's say you have some um, so, some circuit. We, we don't know what it is, whatever, some circuit, some unknown circuit. Um, we don't know what it is, but it, it, it is some circuit. Uh, and from the circuit, let's say there is some path, some wire, and there is some resistance, some resistance, and then it goes back to this, uh, to this uh, continuation of the circuit. And we have some resistor. Um, we also know that the current flows like this, in this direction. So there is this, this, this current that flows here. And we know that, um, so again, the current will flow like this and the current will go back uh, to, to the remaining of the circuit. And because the current is flowing this way, the plus will be here, the minus will be here, and uh, the value of the voltage that is dropped uh, across this resistor is V. Let's just call it, I don't know, let's just call it V naught and I naught. Okay, now um, let's call the nodes. Let's give them some, some names. Let's call this as node A. And let's refer to this node as node B. So if we say we want the voltage VB, it essentially means that we want voltage at A minus the voltage at B. This is really what this means. So it's just a notational way to, to say this. Okay, so if you were to simulate this using multi-sim live, what you do is you build your circuit, you put a probe for the um, with your DMM or to, to measure voltage, the plus here, and you put your minus probe in the bottom. And, and that's what allows you to measure VAB. So basically, you're trying to measure between node A and node B. This is, by the way, just an example to kind of uh, help us understand this question. So let's let's go back to the question. The meaning of the voltage VAB, this thing here, is the voltage at point A with respect to ground. In here, we don't we don't necessarily see a ground. If it was ground, if it was, let's say if we had ground, maybe I could also draw it. Let's say we had a ground. So let's say we have some circuit, we have a resistor, it goes here and it is ground. And this is some, some resistor, some current. There is some voltage drop here, V naught. This is some current I naught. And the following is just the remaining of the circuit. Okay. And this node is, let's just maybe change color. This is referred to as node A. And this is referred to as node B. And we are interested in V a b the voltage a minus voltage b the voltage at b so you put one probe here minus the the voltage that you get here now you know that b will be zero because it is connected to the same node as the ground so you would have v a minus zero so in this case VAB would equal to A, VA, if it is connected to ground, if it is connected to ground, if B is connected to ground. In this case, we, we have no uh, idea that this is the case, right? Now let's go back through the question again. The meaning of the voltage VAB in, is the voltage at point A with respect to ground? Not quite, because nobody told us there's a ground here. 
So we cannot really say with full certitude that it's A. We cannot say this. Uh, the meaning of the voltage VAB is the voltage at point B with respect to ground. Again, there is no there is no hint of ground in here. We just know A and B. Nobody told us it's a ground. Here, we told you it's a ground. We, we mentioned it to you that imagine a ground connected to node B like this. In this case, you could, you could, you could realize this. But here, you cannot realize this. Nobody told us there's a ground. Uh, nobody told us um, uh, there is a, a, a ground here. Right? We don't have a ground here, so we cannot say that. Here, we do clearly see a ground, so we can certainly say, say it here. But in the question, no hint of ground is mentioned. So certainly, uh, B is also not true. Not true. C, uh, VAB is the voltage, uh, the, the average voltage between point A and point B. Not sure why uh, it has the average voltage. Um, so so uh, so the, the word average is just meaningless in this case. We, the, it is not the average. There's no hint that it is the average voltage. Let's check uh, finally uh, D. The vol uh, so the meaning of the voltage VAB is the voltage at the voltage difference between point A and point B. This is the correct one. Right, so this is the correct one. It is the voltage difference, right? So if you see here, it is the voltage difference between point A and point B. Point A and point B. This is what it is. So the only one that makes sense, it's really uh, D. So we expect D to be the, the correct answer. Okay. Uh, so uh, here we're done. Thank you for your attention. Uh, the next lecture will be posted uh, uh, next week. Thank you.